Today on TFP TV, we're talking about the two most significant guns, huh? Ever made by SIG, the P320 versus the SIG P226. We're also going to take a look at two super high-end Gucci guns. We've got the SIG P226X5 right here and the SIG P320 AXG Legion. Going to do a little comparison of all of them. I'm not a big gamer gun guy, but I've had the SIG P226X5 and the SIG P320 AXG Legion for the past six months or so, taking them out to the range a few times. So let's make like Evelyn McHale and jump right into it. SIG P226, arguably best 9mm handgun ever made. One of my favorites. The single stack version known as the SIG P220 was introduced in 1975, but in 1984, SIG more or less made a double stack version of the P220 for entry into the XM9 service pistol trials to replace the 1911. They named it the P226. Just like when I go to my nieces and nephews paintball birthday parties, the P226 absolutely dominated the competition. The 1911 in that test averaged a mere 162 mean rounds between stoppages, while the 226, which was the most reliable gun in the trials, averaged an incredible one failure per 2,877 rounds, making the 226 18 times more reliable than the 1911 in that test. Now, as we all know, the excellent Beretta 92 was eventually chosen to replace the 1911 as the M9 because it performed almost as well as the 226 while being a little bit cheaper. I mean, it's the government after all. What do you expect? That said, one unit who refuses to compromise, the U.S. Navy SEALs, adopted the 226 anyways, while the rest of the military got issued the Beretta M9. The SIG P320 similarly underwent the next generation of military trials, and this time they won handily, which is why the SIG P320 replaced the Beretta M9 as the M17. The performance of the P320 in the M17 trials, not as impressive as the 226 in the M9 trials, because according to a Department of Defense, product verification test, a PVT, the P320 averaged 1,923 mean rounds between stoppages or about one more stoppage per thousand rounds on average than the 226 back in the XM9 test. As I am now a 40-year-old boomer, I would contend that the SIG P226 is the more reliable, if not the most reliable, 9mm handgun ever made and thus is superior to the P320. However, the P320 is the present undisputed king in the U.S. military's eyes. So what do I know? And to be fair, it's difficult to say that the XM9 test from the 80s and then the XM17 test several decades later is an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. There's no way to know that the tests were conducted identically, so don't try to extrapolate too much from those reports. That all said, in my personal experience, which is not insubstantial, I think that the SIG P226 might be the best gun ever made by SIG. So if reliability is all you care about, turn this video off, buy a 226, go about your business, my good man. Now, what are the main differences between the 226 and the P320? Generally, one, the 320 is a striker fired gun, while the 226 is hammer fired. The P320 uses essentially a big spring-loaded firing pin that's released when the trigger's pulled. The 226, on the other hand, uses some variation depending on the model of a double action trigger or a single action trigger. Most are like this one, double action, single action. That's to say that either you can cock the hammer and have a very light trigger pull of about four and a half pounds, or you can fire your first shot with the hammer down, meaning that the first trigger pull will cock the hammer, release it, while all follow-up shots will be single action, see, because the hammer's cocked there. This is actually a great safety feature because your first trigger pull is going to be long and hard like your algebra final exam, while all the follow-up shots are going to be shorter, lighter. You're talking about roughly 9.5, 10 pound trigger pull for that first double action pull, and like I said, around 4, 4.5 pounds for those follow-up shots. The P320, it's going to have the same five, five and a half pound trigger pull every single time. Now the trigger in the X5 here is going to be slightly different than the conventional P226 in that this is a fine-tuned single action only trigger, meaning there's no double action trigger pull. As you can see, this does nothing. You've got to cock the hammer and when you release it, it is a very light, very short 
sub three pound trigger that's adjustable. Second, and this may be a huge benefit for the P320 series, but the P320 has this serialized modular trigger group, also known as the SIG FCU or fire control unit. That means that you can buy a complete SIG P320 or the FCU by itself. And that's your one background check because the FCU is legally speaking the gun. At least that's what my lawyer tells me. Everything else, including the frame, just an accessory. You can swap the FCU from frame to frame to frame to frame, or even into a chassis like this Flux Raider that I've got right over here. This is pretty neat, huh? Essentially, what I did is I took the FCU from my SIG P320 Legion, dropped it into this chassis after I form one and SBR'd, made it a short barrel rifle, legally speaking. But that said, all I have to do is buy the fire control unit, the individual fire control unit, and I can move this from my Flux Raider to my SIG P320 Legion to the X carry that I've got back there, whatever. Really awesome. Because again, you're only buying one gun, legally speaking. The 226, on the other hand, like 90% of pistols out there, has a serialized standard frame, meaning that you might be able to swap slides and barrels, but you're stuck with the same frame no matter what, unless you want to go buy like a 228 or a 229 or whatever, which is a different gun. Now, typically the P320 is a polymer frame handgun, but a few years ago, SIG introduced the aluminum framed AXG model, meaning that those who would prefer a P320 with a metal frame can have it now. And they can just buy the frame if they want and swap in the FCU that they already have, maybe. Capacity on both, it's similar in that they both have numerous magazine options that I won't get into the weeds about here because it's not really a big deal comparatively speaking, especially if you're swapping out frames. It's funny to say that other than that, the 226 and the P320 are pretty similar. I mean, that's a bit like saying basketball and soccer are similar because they're both team sports that use a ball in a net and I don't watch them. On paper, it's tough to beat the P320, mainly because of how modular it is. And if you want something striker fired with the option of swapping frame sizes and slides, it's really, 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 really hard to say no to the P320, especially if it's going to be your only gun. Plus, the 226 is a real bitch to carry concealed, but the P320 has great options like the X carry package I've got here for concealed carry all the way to a go fast gun like the AXG Legion that I've got here. If you can only own one gun, like I said, the P320, probably the smarter choice, but your aging drunk uncle Jay Reeves firmly believes that the 226 is a safer, more proven design that's probably more durable, probably more reliable, and in my hands, I'm actually a better shooter with the 226 than the P320 in terms of performance, but your mileage may vary. You might say it's a dumb answer, but I'd go with the 226 all day. Either's a great choice. Now let's compare the top of the line versions of both guns. The 226X5, which has a $2,200 MSRP, the P320 AXG Legion, 700 bucks cheaper. The 226X5, first introduced in the early 2000s, but only a few made it into the US as they were precise German-made guns that were first made right as SIG Germany started tapering off exports to the United States. I remember the buzz about the X5 and the shop that I owned after I graduated college even got one or two in. They're basically competition-oriented, gamified versions of the 226. They've got this longer 5-inch barrel. That's the 5 in X5. And it's a big honking barrel, single action only, with an incredible trigger made out of two huge monolithic chunks of steel. The SIG P226X5 looks like a beefy German automobile on the outside, like a G-Wagon or a Maybach. But over here, we've got the Ford Raptor with truck nuts, the AXG Legion. Some of you, <coughs> poor people, think that this gun looks cool. But the truth is, Okay, actually, other than the cringy grips, it is pretty cool looking. And I mean, bear in mind, my first date with my wife was to see the movie 300, but man, I would rather have never seen that movie at all than have to deal with 20 years of Sparta soft porn from the gun industry. Dude, you're 42 years old, you can't run a nine minute mile, and you sit to wipe. Get rid of all the Spartan helmet bullshit, please, Leonidas Jenkins. Since we're talking gamer guns, though, looks are half the formula, so the edge here goes to the sleek. X5. I see this thing and I'm thinking, this is a man who appreciates thread counts. This is a man who appreciates stone veining, if you know what that is. But I see the AXG Legion and I wonder if you got your winning lotto ticket with a pack of natural American spirit cigarettes. That all said, the P320 AXG Legion is a mean shooter. 
just put 10 rounds, this is seven yards, got to be a little over an inch, inch and a half. So shooting a little bit to the left, but that's 21 rounds. But there's 10 rounds right there from seven yards. Had a couple of flyers, but now we, we're getting it dialed in. AXG Legion, it's a full-size 9mm pistol, part of the X-Series line of handguns from Sig Sauer. The AXG module is made of metal and features an extended beaver tail and undercut trigger guard for better ergonomics. This one uses an X-Series fire control unit with a skeletonized Legion flat face trigger that provides a smooth, comfortable pull. I think it's about four pounds. A removable, compact magwell helps facilitate reloads, and the pistol comes with three 21-round magazines. The 320 AXG Legion uses an alloy frame, so the grip panels are separate components. In this case, these are Hogue G10. The 320 AXG Legion uses what SIG calls the slide integrated expansion chamber. SIG claims it reduces felt recoil by 30%. It's this little muzzle brake thing up here. It works by expanding the gases that escape from the barrel into this chamber in the slide, which looks like a muzzle brake. It's got two top ports that direct the gases upward counteracts recoil. It's the same concept used on SIG's P365X macro comp, if you remember that, which was remarkably effective, at least for me. The downside is even though the slide's long enough to accommodate a five inch barrel, it has just a dinky 3.9 inch barrel, which means reduced ballistic performance, at least if you're comparing it to the five inch barrel in the X5. Sights are the SIG X-Ray 3.9 sights, pretty good. Even with these combat sights, not very precise, but you can still get great accuracy. It's optics ready, kind of, in that it uses a SIG Romeo 1 footprint, which is one of the less popular mounting patterns. More or less, you're committed to a SIG optic, which isn't much of a bad thing, but I don't like being told what to do, especially if I'm spending 1500 bucks. The P320 AXG Legion has an overall length of 8.2 inches, a height of five and a half inches, and it weighs 36 ounces. It's compatible with pretty much any P320 full-size holster, so there is an absolute shitload of holster options out there for you. Plus, if you buy this gun, you get access to the SIG Legion, Middle-Aged Man, Internet Treehouse Club, and matching challenge coin for the Legion Club or whatever. The P226X5. Mm. This pistol's designed for peak performance. It's got a five inch bull barrel, stainless steel frame and slide. It provides a smooth, flawless action like it's riding on glass. And because it weighs more than a premature baby at a whopping 46 ounces, it doesn't need no stinking expansion chamber to tame recoil. It just relies on its own beautiful, fat ass. The single action trigger is wonderful and the trigger can be adjusted for pull weight, over travel, length of pull. It's on a different level than the AXG Legion to be sure trigger wise. This one's about three pounds from the factory. The adjustable rear sight plate can be removed as I've done here, allowing for direct mounting of again the Romeo 1 Pro footprint, which again is basically proprietary. It comes with three 20 round steel magazines with alloy base pads. It will not accept standard 226 mags simply because those mags are going to be too short, just like how a 226 won't accept 229 mags. Same pattern, not long enough to get the job done. That's mainly because of the massive magwell that the X5 has. The classic version that I got has these handsome Coca-Bolo wood grips from Hogue. They look great, although G10 grips are an option too if you like that better. We were making hits all day with this gun at the outdoor range on a silhouette target at 50 and 100 yards with the iron sights. God damn it. You know, two out of three, two out of three, two out of three. Plus, when you buy cold tracers from our sponsor, Ventura Munitions, and shoot them through the X5, you feel like you're shooting an Imperial Blaster. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? Both guns were 100% reliable over hundreds of rounds through several months. Again, I've had these six, seven months, I want to say. Even took the perverse step of shooting several boxes of the cheapest Wolf Steel ammo I could find through this X5 to see if it made any difference, and it didn't. Before we get to the thrilling conclusion, guys, I don't accept money from SIG to do these videos. As far as I know, I'm sending these guns back whenever I'm done with them. So if you like our content, if you like the fact that we bring you unbiased coverage, we are viewer supported. 
get on Utreon, get on Subscribestar, or get on Patreon and support us. If you're at the $5 level or higher on Subscribestar or Utreon, you're automatically entered to win one of six $250 Top Gun Supply gift certificates, or one of four $100 Blue Alpha gift certificates. Check the rules below. Look, I'm not a tournament shooter. I'm not a gamer gun guy, so take this with a grain of salt. But you guys can probably tell that everything about the X5 appeals to me. I like the P226 pedigree. It's a sophisticated looking piece. The trigger is, in my opinion, much, much, much better than the AXG Legion. And the X5 shot better for me at the range than the AXG. The AXG, it's lighter, as I mentioned, it's more modular, plus the recoil taming expansion chamber works very well. Both guns have great ergos, both guns have good triggers. The X5 just does it for me, and I think outclasses the AXG. On the other hand, the AXG Legion is only two thirds of the price of the X5, performs almost as well. Plus, if you buy the AXG Legion, you can now swap that excellent FCU into other slide and frame combos with the P320, you can't do that with the X5. So what I'm saying is I think the X5 is the better gun, but the AXG Legion could easily be the better choice for you from an economic and pragmatic standpoint. Either way, both wonderful pistols. As to the main question, 226 versus P320, I think I made my opinion clear. My answer is still the same. I think the 226 is a more reliable, better proven design, while the P320 is an extremely reliable pistol but with the unmatched modularity that's backed by SIG's relentless and expansive support for the platform. If you watch this video, you still need help deciding. Just flip a coin and you'll be happy either way. Strength and honor, Leonidas Jenkins. See you guys next week.